Hello and welcome to this quick look back at the very first Tomb Raider game. Over the next coming months leading up to the release of the Tomb Raider reboot in 2013, I'm going to be looking back at, well it's essentially going to be a history of Tomb Raider, I'm going to be looking back at the majority of the games. And I'm also going to be doing a full playthrough of Tomb Raider Anniversary as well. Uh, it's my favourite Tomb Raider game in the series. I think it's really well, you know, it's a remake of Tomb Raider 1, I think it's a brilliant remake, so... I felt that would be something that I think would be a good idea to do. I would love to have done these games again, uh, like played them all, but when I was younger I really didn't play through all of them and I just feel that with Anniversary I'm more comfortable with, I know the game quite well, so I just felt that would you know, be a lot easier to do. Uh, this game originally came out in 1996 um, and I think it was 98 for PC, which I always thought PC was where it came out first, but it, from what I, from what the information I could find out, it was out on the uh, the consoles first because it came out on the Sega Saturn, which shocked me because I don't ever remember it on the Sega Saturn. Um, but I didn't have a Sega Saturn, so that's probably why. Um, I always thought it was only out on PC and PlayStation One. It did eventually come out on the Mac as well. I think that was '98. I could be wrong. I think it was '98 for the PC. Um, with the console versions of the game come out in 1997 in Japan if my information is correct and they also in 1998 released um, well I think they were from what I can understand their expansions they were called Tomb Raider Gold and Tomb Raider Unfinished Business they were the same thing um, from what I understand it was the Tomb Raider Gold was in the North American version of Tomb Raider Unfinished Business um, and they went back to some of the well they, they went it was set a few months after uh, the original Tomb Raider game, it went back to various locations of um, the Tomb Raider game, the very first game, and one of them, from what I can understand, there was a level where you went back to the city of Carmoon, and there was a area called the Temple of the Cat or something. I This is just what I read off uh, the internet. Um, and there was also a level where you went back to destroy um, the Atlantean race, uh, which was featured towards the end of the original Tomb Raider game. Because I, when I first read that, I was thinking of, because I seen um, on PC, because I never had a PC when these come out, I was thinking of the gold, I think it's called the Golden Mask for Tomb Raider 2, and I got a little bit confused with that at first, but yeah. Um, I am actually playing the PlayStation 1 version of this game um, on the original disc, it's not the PlayStation Network download that's available in North America and Europe are the only places that I know you can get it, and that's probably the best place to get it if you're on a PlayStation 3. Because I did um, get all these off Amazon um, a couple of years back, I think it's 2007 now. I did have Tomb Raider 1 at the time, but it came as a bundle. Um, and it didn't have Tomb Raider 2 or 3, which I was kind of disappointed at. Because I did have Tomb Raider 2, um, but an unfortunate accident happened with it. And I'll talk more about that in the, in the look back of Tomb Raider 2. And the last, last revelation I did have, but unfortunately my mum borrowed it to her friend and I never got it back. So I just thought it was a really good bundle. I think it was like seven quid it cost me for the whole load of them. So I was quite happy with that. And the level I'm playing, if you haven't already figured out, it's called the Lost Valley. This is probably one of the most well-known levels for what's about to come up now. And here he comes. This this level always, for me, left a lot of questions. Um, why are these dinosaurs still alive? You know, what are they? How are they keeping themselves alive? Really. Um, I think it was really kind of interesting that they put dinosaurs in it, really. I quite liked it. Because I remember my sister got to this level well before I ever did. And I remember her showing me this. I was like really amazed by it at the time. Oh, no. Oh, I couldn't move. I was really quite annoyed because I could not move there. I should have really just got behind him. And, but I, what I used to do was hide in this cave. And there was a, like a, there was a hole in the wall on the other side. I used to just keep running back and forwards every time he moved to that part I would go so he wouldn't get you um, but I actually forgot there was a raptor behind me but luckily he didn't get me and the reason I chose to do this level is just really because I think this is a really good level it's one of the levels I really remember well I was going to do the caves but I, I just felt the caves didn't they were a bit boring compared to this level um, there is actually a funny thing if you jump on this dinosaur I think it pushes you back oh, well, I thought it pushed you back more than that but just what I sort of remembered really. 
I actually can't remember when I got this game. I know I got a PlayStation from, for one of my birthdays. I think it was either 97 or 98. I can't really remember that well. But I just remember getting an, uh, the, my, a PlayStation for my birthday. I think it was a couple of weeks after that I had some money left over from my birthday and stuff I'd sort of saved up. And uh, I managed to get the game. And the reason I wanted the game is just there was a lot of hype about Tomb Raider. When it, it was probably one of the, you know when I had a PlayStation, you, you it was a new console. I didn't really know a lot about it from what I'd seen, um, and I just heard it was a really good game. And just on that, I really wanted to get it. And I think I played it at my one of my friends' house at the time. And I just remember really liking the look of it. And I seen it for about I think it was about twenty quid at the time because I think Tomb Raider Two was out. I could be wrong, but I think it was out. And I remember just getting it and absolutely loving it from day one. I really wasn't clever. I just sort of stood there and I really should have moved. I, I just thought, oh, I'm going to get him in a minute. So there's no point in moving. And yeah, it kind of didn't happen. But I, I remember um, just really, really enjoying the game when I first got it. And then I think it was the city of Vilcabamba. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, that level really kind of threw me off at first. But once I figured it out... Um, and got to this level, I got back into it again, and I think it was the Tomb of Qualipec, which is the level after this one that kind of put me off the game again. Um, but I did manage to complete it in the end, and got to the level after that, and I think that's where I sort of left it, and never really played it again after that, which is really a shame. Um, through, now that I know what happens through Anniversary, I did use the level skip, so I kind of was aware of the story anyway, but I didn't understand it as much... As I did an anniversary, I think that was because I was a kid and I, I just, I don't know what it is, I play old stuff and watch old films, I understand them better now than when I was a kid, so yeah, I think that's the reason behind that. But what one thing I kind of really liked about Tomb Raider is, I don't think it was ever meant to be a scary game, but I always remember, that was lucky when I fell down there, I thought it was more, of, I thought it was another ledge, but yeah, I got that wrong. Um, I know it wasn't meant to, I, I don't think it was meant to be a scary game. Though I think raiding tombs, there's going to be an element of surprises. And I just always remember when that, on the first level, where you, there's like some stairs you run down just after you jump over that thing where there's a bear in that pit. Um, and there's some music that just kicks in, and it's really quite... It's, well, I'm trying to think... I wouldn't say terrifying, but I'd say it's kind of creepy music. And it always just makes me feel a bit on edge. And then them two, two wolves come out, and I just... It always used to... You know, frighten me a little bit, and I always remember like when you kill an enemy, especially with that T Rex. I, I didn't really like running on where around it in case it got. I was had this fear it was going to get back up. Um, and I remember that with the bears and the wolves and everything. So it's one of the things I really loved about it. It did have that terror. Well, I didn't say terrifying. It had that nervous aspect, and you know, you didn't know what was around the corner. I kind of liked that about it. Uh, no, I don't think I don't know if it was ever intended to be that way. I mean, if I think with the music, it, it would suggest that really. But I, I just like that about it, and as well as I like the puzzles in it because you do have to sort of figure where things are and stuff like that. It's actually quite funny seeing them old blue crystals because I think in anniversary they're not there. It is actually quite surprising as well. I, I, I was thinking this throughout the whole time I played this. Um, how easy it, this part of it is compared to the anniversary section of this. Because on anniversary you've got to jump over quite a few ledges and it's quite a long process. And it's some of the parts are quite easy to fall down on. So it is surprisingly... Normally it's the other way around I usually find. It's actually quite funny as well when I was um, playing this. Because I thought the first cog I picked up, because this I was playing it just to get familiar with the level um, before I filmed this part, I actually thought the cog was using ammo. And I couldn't think, I was trying to find the third cog, and then it dawned on me when I picked the second one up and the third one up that it was actually a cog, not using ammo. I think also with. Um, the anniversary level remade level of this there's a part where you go you put the cogs on in a different place which is kind of a little bit harder as well and at the start of the level because i was originally going to go and get the shotgun first but then i realized there's no point because we have to go that way at the end 
Um, I mean, shotgun you could use against the T-Rex, but you're just wasting ammo, I find. Speak of the devil, there he is. Um, so yeah, I, did, I didn't really think it was worth me getting the shotgun first, so I decided to leave that to last. But you actually, it's better to go that way first. I think you actually have to go the way where we have to put the cogs first, because the first cogs there, and we need it to get over to the next part. Another change, I mean, you will see this because when I do the playthrough, another change is that there's actually a bear um, where the wolves were, not by the water, but where we jumped over that first bar. It's like a lump of rock, I would say. Um, when we jumped over that, where the three wolves attacked, there's actually a bear there in that part, which obviously isn't in this version. Whether or not it's in any of the versions of the game, um, I don't entirely know. Yeah, I think as well what was really different about Lara Croft is obviously it, most action films featured men, didn't they, really? A lot, a lot of them. Well, it's always most action games are probably, I think it was sort of the first time that there was a female character in an action game. I, I don't know that for sure because a lot of games did follow around that time as well. Um, like Resident Evil, which I think I've heard the games really that had female characters. There were a lot anyway. Um, it's funny because I'll probably like think about it later on and think, oh yeah, that game. I should have said that game. Um, but I think it was it was different to see um, a female character as an action hero. I think at that time I could be wrong because I was very young. So, but that's something I just remember thinking. And um, it was different as well because it's normally in a lot of action films it's, it's sort of mainly Americans. And uh, it was different that she was. Um, British, so I always thought she was American to start with. I'll be quite honest. And when I first heard her talk, it, it didn't dawn on me then. I don't think for a while, but I, I kind of like that they've you, you know used a British thing. It's probably just because I'm that nationality, but I just kind of like that about it. I felt it was different, so I don't think it would have mattered if she was American. I think you know it still would have been a great game. Uh, there, I actually thought the wolves were going to come back. I was thinking it was. I got confused with the anniversary level because they do come back when you get to this part. The bit I was referring to, where you have to put the cogs, is just over that wall, just there. Um, but we don't actually have to go on. There's nothing there. It's just just a wall this time around. Well, in this game, this next bit really did take me quite a few attempts. So I've sort of edited it out, and there was a funny attempt that I wanted to show you. So I've left some parts of it in. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I first left, the first, I think I got over it the first time. Yeah, that's right, and I think it's on the next bit here I fell in. and It's very frustrating, this bit when you fall in. It's, it, you've got to get the timing on the jump, because what I was trying to do is back up and then hit holding on to the X bu uh, square button to jump, but I kind of didn't, yeah, I kind of didn't press it quick enough. Um, I think I held on to it too long or something like that, and she just dropped straight, and I was like, oh, no, I've got to get back up there. I always remember her jumping off that and screaming, but I, I really could be wrong on that. I think it's if you did a swan dive. Because it was quite, I think it took me out five attempts to get across that wall, so. Um, and I really didn't want to leave that in because I didn't think it was really fair, but I just left a few. I just wanted to show the first time, so like, if you hadn't seen the game or couldn't didn't remember it that well, I just thought I'd show you what would actually happen. And how frustrating it was. I think this one I don't jump far back enough. I think I just jump. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I didn't know what. I just couldn't believe I did that. I was like, oh, what have I done that for? Um, but then I decided to advance it a little bit more. Uh, it just it for easier viewing. Well, I didn't say easier viewing. It just saved more time, really, because it was about 24 minutes, the whole thing. And I thought... Yeah, I don't think people are going to see me fail for 24 minutes. Well, it's going to be about 5, 10 minutes. And this one I left in because I just thought it was it was annoying more than anything. But it was just kind of funny as well. I wouldn't say it's the funniest. She hit her head on that thing and fell in. I was, you actually have to run and jump. But um, I always remember just jumping over there. But Now, this once you get to this bit, it, it shouldn't really be any problems. Because in the anniversary level, there's like a piece of rope. Oh no, she's got that. Sh that she's got her little. Oh, I forget the name of it now. She's got a, like a wire she can throw to swing off things. A grapple, I think it's called. 
Um, so, but she didn't have this one, have the grapple in this version. Obviously, because they never thought of it at that time. They either didn't think of it at that time, or there wasn't enough memory in the game. I, I really don't know uh, the specifics behind the, what what's in the game and what's not. This bit in Anniversary, there's a few bats that try to attack you as well. Um, but when I do do the playthrough of Anniversary, you will see this. And this bit here is a lot different in Anniversary because there's like a, it's all wood. And to get to each, there's like three different le levels, I think. You've got to get up. Um, and to get to each level, you need a cog. And that's why you have to uh, go over to the bit with the dinosaurs to get them. I think that's them all in. Oh no, I didn't put that one in. But yeah, I, I was shocked how fast I really did set for the fo the fails into the water. How quick I got through this level, because I remember it taking me a good half an hour, maybe maybe quarter of well. Three is it three? Well, forty-five minutes. Then I was trying to think the term for it, but I couldn't think of it at the time. I think it was three quarters of an hour, but I... yeah, no, that was what it would have been. Yeah, it was actually quite funny because I went this way first, um, and if you come this way first before hitting that switch, that is, there's no water in there, and I ran all the way down there only to find out that I couldn't get to the secret area, so I had to come back again. I think the shotgun in Anniversary isn't in this level. I think it's much later on. I could be wrong on that, mind. I just remember it not... I think it's in the Tomb of Qualipec, actually. Oh, because the Tomb of Qualipec the next level. It's actually one of the levels I remember so well because I remember how frustrating it was. There was a spike puzzle that always got me every time I can... It really took me some time to get past it. And I remember the time I did, I was like... I think I was, I was about to save it and we had a power cut or something. I was, oh no. I was absolutely gutted. I really was. But I've got to say, I've thoroughly enjoyed playing this, so what I've played so far. I forgot how good a game it really, really was. And this is, I don't know where the other secret is. This is the one I always remember. Because I think it's some shotgun shells and a medipack. I always used to think that they they look like a drink, you know, like the drinks you can get in cartons. Um, I always used to think that's what it was when I picked it up. Oh, it's double. Sh I think it's double shotgun ammo. Well, every little helps, as Tesco always says. And um, this will lead us to where I kept falling into the water. Now, um, I think I'm just going to sort of drop down gently because I don't want to cause too much damage. That's quite a drop. I was unsure if you could actually dive off that bit there, but I just thought I'd play it safe and just walk down there. I just thought it was the best option. And that's pretty much going to be it for this level. All I've got to do now is just drop down and go under where the waterfall would have been. I was just trying to see if you could have jumped down there because I wanted to make it look as epic as possible. But yeah, I, I didn't want to chance it really, so I just left it as it was. I think there's some secrets in here because there are an anniversary. There's like a secret area underwater, but I wasn't sure, so I just left it. Um, but anyway, that's the end for this video. Um, thank you very much for watching.